And we are back with our regular programming after last week's five-year celebrations. We got Frank Holmes on this week's Gold Game Film. Frank, thanks for coming on today. It's great to be back, and I hope you had a fantastic week of celebrations. Thank you, Frank, and thank you for chipping in last week. Now, looking back at last week as well, we saw some real negative movement in the global equity markets. They were punished, like my Niners secondary yesterday. Uh, but, I mean, moving forward, looking at gold, gold reacted positively last week. How do you see this building up? Do you see equities being lower, you know, going on and this benefiting gold? Well, there's just, if you look at gold, in fact, gold wasn't volatile like bonds were. Ten-year government bonds had an incredible massive swing, which is a much, much bigger market than any gold market is. I mean, it's mind-boggling that the swings that interest rates for 10 years fell below 2% and back up over 2%. They were only 260 a month ago. So there's tremendous fear of deflation and the economy. And I think that what I mentioned a couple of weeks ago is that the G20 was meeting, there's a non-confidence vote the capital markets are it's basically their policies are just not fiscally stimulative enough for global economic synchronized growth. Yeah, Frank, I'm glad you mentioned bonds. Uh, last week, like you said, was a, a big week for bonds uh, negatively. And that seemed to support the safe haven bid for gold. Now, moving forward, do you see this as a continuing factor or do you expect other factors at play maybe? Well, I think the dollar started correcting finally after being up, you know, two standard deviations over 60 trading days. The dollar's due for a big correction. And I guess we have to wait till November the 4th when we have the uh, midterm elections in America. Uh, that, you know, that may be the swinging tipping point. Now, before going over to the OT segment, we have mining earnings coming up uh, next week. Now, it's, we know gold prices were, gold and silver prices were lower throughout the third quarter. So can we expect some real, uh, I wouldn't say a bloodbath, but some, uh, maybe some messy earnings coming out in the next couple of weeks? Well, they're forecasted uh, gold stocks to be off uh, over 25% in their earnings and silver stocks over 30%. So silver stocks will take it on the chin more, but that's already been reflected in the stock prices. What's important for investors to recognize that every 1% move in bullion historically has been a 3% move in gold stocks and silver stocks 4%. So when we had this great rally in the first six months of the year, silver and gold stocks far outperformed bullion and silver. Now that we're going through a correction, the gold stocks and silver stocks are taking it much more on the chin. All right, Frank, let's move on to opportunities and threats now, starting with opportunities and news of the GDXJ allowing larger companies into the index. Now, we know the sector, the junior sector, has been beaten up pretty good lately. Um, what are the opportunities you see here? Well, the GDXJ is just structurally flawed. Uh, and there's so many compliance things that drive that equation. And such as in America, brokers cannot recommend a, a mid-cap or a gold stock unless they have a gold stock analyst on staff but they can all go buy a gold a GDXJ or a GDX. So that has been the go-to. So huge amounts of money have flown, it, have flown into the GDXJ and it starts buying all these gold stocks which are falling and all of a sudden this pool of capital owns so many stocks, it owns more than 10% of their float. And now they structurally have to turn around and start looking at big caps. So eventually I think the GDX and the GDXJ will merge. And sticking with opportunities, uh, touch on the Diwali Festival coming up at the end of the week. Is the love trade back, Frank? The love trade is back, and it's been remarkable to see India with a 450% increase in the consumption of gold, uh, which is wonderful for their country and their currencies. However, it creates a deficit the way gold, when, it, when they do the, with the current account deficit accounting, their accounting policies make it look like it's worse off. And looking at threats now, we got the Swiss gold referendum taking place in November. Now, the, it's a motion that the Swiss bank will have to hold a minimum of 20% of its assets in gold. Now, do you see this as a threat for gold prices? Well, I think the, gold, the Swiss have already been lowering their exposure to gold, and there's an arrogance that they can just do whatever they want with their currencies, and they're smarter. Uh, but what they've been doing as they've been selling the gold and printing money, as they've been buying their stock market. They've been buying the biggest market cap companies. So the Swiss stock market's done relatively well as central banks have been buying their own stocks. 
Uh, so I think that that is a threat only short term. It's more psychological than it is anything else. It'll be interesting if it doesn't go through, will it be a big boom? All right, Frank, and a nod to the great Peyton Manning, who just broke the all-time NFL touchdown passing record against the Niners. What is your touchdown pass for the week? A touchdown pass. Well, the touchdown pass is coming out of Asia tonight. The GDP of China, it's the GDP numbers, it's industrial production, uh, the sort of overall foreign direct investment, all those data points will be coming out tonight. And the fact that China is 50% of all global commodity demand, it is the 800-pound gorilla. All eyes will be on what's coming out of China. But looking forward, if you want to be a forecaster, what's more important is Thursday's flash PMI. When everyone streaks across the stock screens, not the football field, giving what they think the economy is going to do in six months from now. Beautiful, Frank. Thanks for stopping by today. Great to be here. And thank you for watching this edition of Gold Game Film. Of course, comments or questions are always welcome at newsfeedback at kitco.com. Have a great week.